Welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we're going to master a song with seven compressors. Won't be easy, but we're going to try to avoid limiters, equalizers, expanders, or any plugins that wouldn't fit into the description of compressor. And then we'll listen to the results to see if it can be done. So if you could like, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for the full video. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. The first compressor I'm gonna use is the Weiss DS1 Mark III. I'm gonna use it for DSing. This plugin came in handy for this session. Because I can alter the range being affected, I was able to hone in on certain frequencies. By compressing specific frequencies, I can make others seem louder in comparison, kind of like how an equalizer works. I use this plugin to gently attenuate sibilance based frequencies around 5 kHz. I accomplish this by using a narrow band and switching the plugin to mid side so that only frequencies in the center image would be compressed. The result was a smoother, slightly wider sound. Let's take a listen to it. The second compressor that I used was the Ursa DSP Boost and I used it for low level compression. With the highs tamed, I could now start amplifying aspects of the signal that I enjoyed. Using the Boost plugin, I introduced subtle maximization and low level compression. I made sure not to engage the plugin's limiter since this would kind of be cheating. I kept the max gain to 3 dB to ensure that maximization and low level compression didn't amplify the signal too much. Again, I wanted to perform this master without any limiting. Lastly, I didn't use any transient shaping since this didn't really fit into the definition of a compressor. Let's take a listen to the effect. The third compressor was the FabFilter Pro C2, which I used for mid-range compression. With the Pro C2, I wanted to capture the mid-range and subtly compress and amplify it. Using the mastering algorithm, and by carefully setting my threshold, I was able to compress the signal in an almost transparent way. I enabled the auto-release setting, and made it a little faster so that the timbre of the track wasn't altered. Additionally, I kept the auto-gain setting enabled to compensate for any attenuation. Lastly, in the sidechain section, I enabled both the low and high pass filters. This way, only the mid range would be affected. I also enabled oversampling to make the quantization more accurate, which would prove to be helpful later on to avoid peaking distortion. Additionally, I slightly reduced the output later on to avoid clipping. Let's take a listen to it. Next up, I used the FabFilter multiband and I used it for multiband compression. 
With this compressor, I wanted to augment the kick, mid-range, and high frequency spectrum. I increased the amplitude of these sections by 1 to 2.5 dB and enabled a compressor on each. By carefully setting the range of each band, I was able to get the signal to return to 0 dB whenever the compressor was triggered. I also tailored each band's attack and release to that frequency to ensure that distortion didn't occur and that transients would be retained. As a result, I ended up with a more impressive kick, vocal, and hi-hats. I also enabled oversampling to reduce peaking distortion later on. Let's take a listen to it. For the fifth compressor, I use the Oxford Inflator for low-level compression and saturation. The Oxford Inflator has a great tonality to it. With it, you can simultaneously compress a signal and achieve a tone similar to a valve or a tube. Now, keeping in mind that I wouldn't be able to use limiting later on, and in turn wouldn't be able to push low-level signals against a brick wall ceiling, I use this low-level compressor a little more aggressively than I normally would. I increase the effect to about 20%, and reduce the curve. If I wanted to make the signal warmer, I could increase the curve, but I liked the cleaner sound of a negative curve. I also split the signal using the band split option since I was working with a full spectrum signal. Let's take a listen to it. Next up, I used the Chandler Limited Germanian Comp, and I used it for parallel compression and saturation. Next, I knew I needed to achieve some distortion, but I didn't want to resort to a saturator plugin. Although saturation is technically a form of compression, I thought it would be best to stick to actual compressors. Now, I figured I could use parallel compression to heavily compress the signal, in turn causing some distortion and also some saturation. Now, with the Germanian Comp, I used the Dirty Comp setting. Then, I realized that I wouldn't be able to use a stereo imager or midside EQ, so I decided to enable midside processing. This way I could compress and distort the mid and side channel separately, and eventually cause stereo expansion. I increased the drive and feedback of both bands, as well as used more aggressive compression settings on the mid channel to make the side more impressive. Additionally, I reduced the release speed for the side image to ensure that the hi-hats retained their timbre. Lastly, I increased the output of the plugin to get more tonality from it while reducing the level of the auxiliary channel fader. This way I got a complex and wide sounding signal while still being able to blend it in with the original signal. Let's take a listen to it. Last up, I used the Weiss DS1 Mark III, and I used it for compression, gain, and output control. 
making sure that the signal didn't clip without using a limiter and while keeping the level of the master somewhat loud was the biggest challenge of this chain. Now in the end I was able to get the master to about negative 13 LUFS without clipping, which wasn't as loud as I wanted it to be, but it would work well for streaming nonetheless. Now kind of like the FabFilter Pro C2, I kept the compression to the mid-band. This way the kick and hi-hats came through, but the mid-range was controlled. This definitely made things a little more difficult, since the hi-hats and kick in the song were the most dynamic things, but keeping those intact was important. Next, I started adjusting the compressor settings by using a soft knee setting with a lower threshold and a higher ratio of 13 to 1. These settings emulated how an electrical component would saturate if pushed, but without the distortion. This created a naturally dynamic sound. Additionally, I enabled the mid-side mode to keep the majority of the compression to the mid-image. The most important setting that I used here was the automatic makeup gain. I had to balance this setting with reducing the overall gain to ensure that clipping didn't occur, but having the signal increase when compression occurred caused a similar effect to limiting, but without the truncating of any transients. Getting the attack and release times right was tricky as well, but I ultimately settled on faster settings to retain transients, but not so quick that the signal distorted. Let's take a listen to it and to the full chain. So, how do you think this sounded, and are you going to try it out for yourself? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out, and it's the best way to stay up to date on all of the videos that we release. Lastly, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you, and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you in the next video.